there, Edmar Colon here once again at Virtuosity Musical Instruments in Boston. Last time I was here, I got the honor to play test the Selmer Supreme Tenor. Today, I am here to talk about Theo Wani mouthpieces, reeds, and a little bit about myself. I play Selmer Mark VI, 125,000, and uh, when we did our unveiling of the Supreme Tenor here, Virtuosity, uh, we had Doug Pfeiffer from Toronto, who is a Selmer historian, and I learned the cool fact that this horn was made by Monsieur Noel, and he left the factory in, in Paris in November of 1965. Pretty cool facts. A beautiful horn that is, you know, more than 50 years old and um, adheres to the amazing quality that Selmer continues to do to this day. And my mouthpiece up here it's a Theo Wani Ambika rubber model, so Ambika 4. This is an amazing piece, it's an 8 star, I believe, uh, just an 8, just an 8. And I'm playing um, Diadario Organic Unfile Reads 3 Hard. This is a 3 Hard right now. I play improvised music, you know, I write a lot of music as well, so I I spend a lot of time playing the music that I write, but I also spend a lot of time writing music for other folks. Um, I just finished a commission for the Boston Pops right across the street from here. So music that I play, improvise music, and I write a lot of music as well. So uh, that's a little bit about the music that I do. Theo Wani mouthpieces. I started playing them recently. I, I've been... Uh, somewhat throughout my life and my career as a musician and saxophonist and a performer, sort of the, the anti-saxophonist mentality where, <laughs> and I mean this in a good way to all my dear saxophonists, where, where people go crazy with gear and like, I want to have this mouthpiece and every other day they change mouthpieces like they change socks. And I have not been that kind of person, uh, just, just, um, just because I wanted to stay with what works. So, in the 15 years or so more that I've been playing, I've, I've, I've had a handful of mouthpieces, maybe maybe five serious mouthpieces, you know. Like, I remember very first professional mouthpiece I had when I was a kid, you know, I don't know, 12, 13. It was like a Van Doren Jumbo Java that I, I was so fixated with something super bright and I put a clay, a clay baffle, a baffle made out of clay. Play-Doh, specifically, you know, blue Play-Doh. <laughs> Uh, and then that didn't work for a long time. And then I, I got a, what I consider my first professional, real, really amazing mouthpiece, which was an, a Morgan medium chamber, uh, eight star. I was there for a while, came to Berkeley, met George Garçon. He gave me a, a Jody Jazz, like 10 star. I played that for a long time. I was, you know, very serious. And then, then until very recent, I decided to play a Van Doren V16 8 star because I wanted to return to a smaller uh, size, so I didn't get a uh, so I didn't you know had uh, you know make myself a, get a hernia or something like that. I was blowing such a big mouthpiece, and as of you know about maybe a year and a half, I found Theo Wani, which I knew for a while, but I found myself playing it because my dear friend who works for them, Thomas Harris, was telling me you should check this out. And I was like, yeah, sure, I will check it out. And they sent me a wonderful Lashmi, which was a metal piece, which I think I see right here in front of me. And it was the first metal mouthpiece that I play and I went to record with and I play many gigs and I travel with it and I play different settings. I never play metal mouthpiece. I was always a rubber guy except for one one very little moment in my life that I played um, a, a Bobby Duke of when I was a, a, a teenager and, and that was terrible. I, I couldn't play in tune. Not that the Bob Duke of was terrible, they're amazing mouthpieces and you know, early Brecker had an incredible, you know, sound on the on the Duke of and, and of course, David Sanborn, amazing, but it didn't work for me. And you know, growing up in Puerto Rico it was really hot. So the feeling of the mouthpiece in my mouth was weird, very hot, and and when it would get hot, I just feel strange. Anyhow, I found 
this amazing Lakshmi that, that my friend Thomas, you know, got me into trying and I was like, wow, this is incredible. This, and of course, the craftsmanship and the, the, the brilliance uh, of, of, the, of the composition. The, the composition, and I'm talking about the composition of the mouthpiece, uh, really struck me. I was like, wow, this is incredible. And here I am today with what I'm playing as of like maybe a week and a half, very new, Ambika 4, 8 tip opening, which is fantastic. I'm even using their ligature here. I'll maybe give you a little uh, test of how this sounds. <laughs> It's a little bit of um, All the Things You Are, classic standard in the standard repertoire of um, the American songbook. Once again, the Ambika 4. I think you're gonna see this right here written really nicely, but Ambika 4 with the, the Dario organic, their new organic reads. I got to these reads because I've been playing the Adario for a while and as, again, as the I, I think I lied earlier when I said that I don't have the saxophone player uh, disease of having tons of uh, gear. I lied a, a little bit because I, I've gone through all the mouthpieces, all the reads, but what I meant by that is that I don't, you know, uh, change every day. But so for the longest time now, I've tried all the reads in the spectrum of the read world that you all know probably. Which I'm not gonna start saying all these names here, but I've been playing Dadario because I find a consistency in the vibration of the reed, which I like a lot. Consistency in the vibration of the reed. And that's something that I take in consideration when I'm trying anything. That's that's actually an important point for me thinking about gear. Does the do I feel like my fingers are vibrating when I play the horn? And this has to do with the saxophone, the mouthpiece, and the reed and the ligature and all together. And I feel that right now. I actually feel a vibration in my fingers. So I feel resonance. That's how I measure it anyways. I think I heard that from one of my great mentors. Uh, I had many. Uh, but this one in particular was Joe Lovano, the great American saxophonist. And he, he would talk about you know, the horn has to vibrate all together with you. So this whole combo right now is vibrating pretty nicely. <laughs> This read allows also for some versatility, you know, throughout the range and the the octave ranges on the instrument. And I feel a clarity, I'm saying range a lot, but you know what I mean? <laughs> And since we're talking about Theowani mouthpieces, let's check them out. Here's the Ambika 4, 8. Thank <laughs> you. 
That was the uh, first four bars of John Coltrane's Naima. Then I play a little sum on, on those four bars. And this read and this mouthpiece combination, this particular mouthpiece, uh, has a certain brilliance that I like without losing the core and bottom of the instrument, but also cuts a little bit. And there's a, there's a nice evenness throughout the range, which I really enjoy. So here we go now with the Ambika 4 8 in the metal version. Again, the read is Dadario Organic on file 3 hard. That's a broken line I stole. This piece certainly much brighter than the hard rubber one, perhaps the material. Uh, same consistency. Uh, very easy to play in tune. That's super important. And that's the first thing I probably check on the mouthpiece on the horn is, you know, what it, how does it allow me to control the intonation and, and you know, what I'm hearing. Right now, I was just adjusting ever so slightly and the top stack on the palms, I was just, just adjusting, lowering a little bit my embouchure just so it was feeling a little sharp. But in the, the consistency throughout the range, it's, it's pretty amazing. And vibration, as I was talking earlier, I feel a strong resonance in the mouthpiece within, you know, together with the horn, that is, because that's an important element. You know, mouthpieces and horns don't work by themselves. It's always a, has to be a perfect com combination. What I mean by that is that a great mouthpiece might not really work with a, with a, a great horn. It's really specific. But this mouthpiece, it's, um, uh, a little brighter than the rubber one, a little brighter, which I, I, I like. Here is it again. So here we are with the Chiba 4. This is going to be fun. That's bright uh, and fun and nice and powerful and strong and uh, and bright. Wow, Shiva, powerful, direct, edge, bright, and strong. I think I, I'm, I'm into my Ambika a little more, but 
it's you know nonetheless fun to try this out and play it very 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 powerful and very very um resonant rich loud <laughs> Here we go with the Durga 5. Getting, we're getting brighter in the brighter zone here but but again you know with Theo whether it's bright dark or medium doesn't matter the the consistency is there check it out it's like top to bottom <laughs> very consistent very consistent that's that's the word that keeps coming consistency and the consistency comes from from a very, 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 very close attention to detail, which which clearly it's you know very evident in these mouthpieces, uh, extremely evident in these mouthpieces. So this is Durga is bright, and um, I think it's perfect for like a funk rock setting, you know, or uh, or, or you know pop band, you know, if you're touring with Luis Miguel or Ricky Martin or perhaps uh, I don't know, you know Taylor Swift. Uh, any any genre that it, that goes beyond you know the jazz world, I think this is this is I think this might be the mouthpiece for you. So here we go with the Lakshmi again with uh, Naima, a uh, couple of bars of Naima. I'm more familiar with this piece as it was the one that I was playing before switching to the Ambika, very recently. So this is a Lakshmi eight. Here's Naima again. So this one is a more familiar feeling. I think this tree might be a little on the brighter side too. So I think it's playing into that um, uh, sort of color quality. But you know, certainly it's a, the, the piece at this, uh, uh, on itself is, is darker than the Durga and the Shiva. And, and I, it has like a kind of like a, in a way, almost like auto link essence, you know, early metal auto link. You can go for that. This is culture and cry. go Theowani Gaia 4 metal Thank <laughs> you. 
nice a little warmer still with an edge and a cut i think also the the metal pieces which is historically true have that um natural tendency of of heading towards the edgier side because of the, the material it makes sense uh however you can tell you know just the, the the wonderful construction of the baffle the chamber and the you know the feeling that i get on this one again it's it's control which i actually get with all of them but that i can actually with this one i suppose as, as opposed with the other ones that i've tried so far i can actually this one is almost like a chameleon in a way um, I'm, I'm getting the sense where I can play darker if I wanted to and, and push it and, and get more brilliance out of it. I mean, i give you an example of what I mean. So this is on a dark, if I'm thinking more darker, like playing over those changes. Not only I'm playing softer, but which is allows me to do, but I'm thinking sort of on a darker profile. And if I want to push it, so you see, I can go and push it to a certain place where it will go uh, and I can just retract and, and keep it on the mellow or warmer side as well. And that was the Gaia 4. Okay, <clears throat> here we go with the Gaia 4, correct? Yes, Gaia 4 in the rubber edition, hard rubber edition. This is, I must say, this is extremely fun for me just to come here, try mouthpieces and talk to you guys about this. Let's see what this one does. Are we ready, friends? It's easy to play and it responds. The response is amazing, actually. Uh, it's a joy. I mean, I'm enjoying them all. Alec, what am I going to say? This is, <laughs> this is fun. This, this sounds great. <clears throat> okay, let's go to the next one. So here we are with uh, premiering, um, interesting, longer chunk here, premiering the Brahma. This is an eight star. And this is their newest model. Theowani Brahma their newest model in stock. And uh, I believe this is a first play test of this. Here. Yeah. I'll play a little bit of that piece that I've been playing, then I'm gonna play a little more just to, uh, just to have fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
This is really, really nice. It's, it's, I, I think my read is br on the brightest side, so I keep saying this, but actually, I don't mind that. I, I think, like, the great, I'm going to quote one of, another mentor of mine, Bill Pierce, the great Billy Pierce. He said, I don't think about bright or dark. I think about resonant or not. Some people like s such dark sounds that it just becomes, loses the resonance. And then some people have super bright sounds that and have no, no, no body to the sound. So I think... And that's another conversation we can get to in the next video, perhaps talking about concepts. Um, but this is this is pretty nice. I'll play a little more. I'm gonna switch pieces. This is again back to that older things you are from the beginning. <laughs> Well, that's nice. I feel in this one just a, um, well, it's like a combination of all the pieces that I've tried so far. That's what I think. I think the Brahma is a combination of the Ambika, the Durga, the Gaia, the Shiva. It's like all of them in one piece, the Lakshmi. That's how, that's what I think. It's has, has them all in one. And it's just a long, I like this longer chunk situation here too. I think I could tune in a little further into the mouthpiece so there's a better seal. I just had an amazing time playing all these mouthpieces. Really, really fun uh, getting to to try uh, and feel the quality, the consistency and the quality in Theowani mouthpieces. And if you want to learn more about these mouthpieces and perhaps get one yourself, click right here. Click right here. So here we are with the last piece of the day. We're going to do the Brahma 8-star metal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I actually, this is the closest one that I feel from the rubber and the metal one. It feels very close to the Brahma rubber. I think the vibration of the material is a little different. I feel it a little different in my, in my mouth as well. And I think it just projects a tiny bit more, but I think the color of the, of the mouthpiece are, are pretty even. They're pretty even between the rubber and the metal piece. Very forward, controlled. It doesn't get too spread. Maintains the focus, but with warmth. Very beautiful. Very beautiful indeed. If you feel like you want to try these mouthpieces that I just play tested here and try some of these reads, make sure that you come by here to Virtuosity Musical Instruments in Boston. Thank you very much and this has been a tremendous fun today for me and I'll see you next time in another video just like this one. Thank you. Come by here, stop. I mean, I touched my nose, that's weird. I've had a, a super fun time. So here we are with Alec. Hello there again. <laughs> hey there, Edmar Colon here again at Virtuosity Musical Instruments in Boston, Massachusetts. To uh, what are we doing today? Edmar Colon here once again at Music, oh, got this. Take three. At Virtuosity Musical Instruments in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I don't have to say Massachusetts. We're, we're warming up, we're warming up. Yeah, so we're to talk about three one in mouthpieces, reads, and a little bit about myself. A little, a little, a little about myself. That was great. I gotta do something just for the bloopers. I can do the merengue by the way. Rafi, don't judge me, Rafi. <laughs> <laughs>